Hi there, welcome along to today's vlog. As promised, today we are pitting the Selma Series 2 Soprano against the Yanagasawa 992 Soprano. It is everything the same. It's the same mouthpiece, which is the Dan Forshaw Sios, uh, the same reed, a Venn clarinet reed on 2.5, obviously the same player, same reverb settings, same EQ. Everything is going to be exactly the same. I can't play them at exactly the same time because that would be a bit Russ and Roland Kirk, but other than that, I am going to try and be as fair as possible. I'm going to black out as much, obviously, almost all of it, because when I did the tenor one, you lot were all moaning that you could all see uh, different ones through. But the same pieces, same thing. Obviously, it's not totally scientific, but it's just an idea for you to hear both of them against each other. Have a guess before I do the reveal. Um, you can cheat if you want to, but then you're just cheating yourself. Let me know what your thoughts are between the two Sopranos. I have not played both of these, you know, together yet. I'm about to put everything together and uh, then we'll get started. <laughs>
So, what did you think? I thought about going back and just taking the sensor bit off. I managed to get the sensor to work better this time, but I thought, do you know what, we'll just go through it and I'll just tell you at the end. So, did you prefer sax A or sax B? Could you guess which one was which? Are you ready? Here comes the result. Sax A was the... Yanagasawa 992, Sax B was the Selma. I have to say, um, listening back to it and going through the edit, these type of videos take a long time to edit. Um, obviously I play through them a lot and then go back and try and splice them up, move them around, and of course there's the audio to match. I mean, you're not bothered about all that, are you? Um, what was interesting is actually how similar they are. There is definitely a different tonal concept going on with the Selma. If you go back and listen, you can definitely tell there's a, a difference in the sound on the Selma than what there is on the Yanagasawa. There's there's more of a core to it. It's, I wouldn't say it's darker, but there's, there's a richness there. And I feel like there's more to come out of this. This is a phenomenal, the Yanagasawa, don't get me wrong, is phenomenal, and I play it so easily. Um, on those classical pieces where I realised my classical chops are really out of practice. Apologies. Um, it was a lot easier to play it on the Yanni than it was on the Selma. Again, those top notes uh, weren't necessarily coming out as well. But also as well, I was able to hit the keys. Sorry, excuse me one moment. Hit notes on this, not just the spoon keys, but um, on that snake hit waltz is a really awkward GA flat bit that goes up in an octave. On the Yanni, not an issue. On the uh, Selma, I struggled. That could be because the Selma's a straight neck, the Yanni's a curved neck, um, and therefore, you know, the hands just land in the same position. I've been playing this Yanni for about 10, 12 years now, possibly longer. I've been playing on Yanni Gasawa since I was 16, and sadly that wasn't 10, 12 years ago. It feels like 10, 12 years ago. Some days, some days it feels even longer. Um, so, yeah, they're both, let me pop this down, because we're talking, that's mine in there. The bit of summertime you just heard there was recorded at the Cambridge Arts Theatre last March as part of my Our Music in Paris show. So the Yanni has kind of got time served. The Selma, you know, I'm still getting used to it and working around it. There's no doubt it's a phenomenal soprano. What did surprise me with the Selma in the last review, I was talking about its phenomenal intonation. Possibly me tightening up because I've been playing for so long, but when I was playing that Jumapidi by Sate, that top B, and now it's bang in tune, but that top B was very, very sharp, whereas I'd found prior that the Selma was holding its intonation pretty flawlessly. The Yanni is always a battle. It's always been a battle between kind of getting it in tune in one octave and out of tune in the other, and you've just got to compensate and use your ear to find out. Um, so, can I split them? Well, I don't know yet. There is definitely an element of this is new and interesting. It's obviously not a new product, but it's new to me. And what I do like is there does seem to be a lot more depth, a lot more nuances in the Selma sound versus the Yanni sound. And certainly I think on the classical stuff, the Selma, it sounds at home, doesn't it? But that might be because most of the people I listen to playing classical saxophone are playing on Selmas. Everyone is that way around. They're both fantastic instruments. If you were to ask me and pin me down between the two of them, I'd ask you for a bit more time.